All right. I think we are all set, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, a couple of reminders first, I guess, before we just jump right in. Um, you are all muted right now, and that's not because we don't want to hear you. We just don't want to hear all of you at once. So you're all muted. If you have a question, uh, you can find the question pane on your kind of um, webinar menu on the right-hand side of your screen. You can type a question in there. That does not go to the whole group, so you can feel free to ask whatever you want. Um, if it needs to be answered to the group, we will do that. Otherwise, we'll shoot you an answer back privately. Um, if you um, kind of just need us to pause, maybe you're typing a question or you're just sort of processing what we just showed you, um, you can use that raise hands feature that's also over there in your menu. And that's kind of our cue of, hold up, we need to you know, revisit something here or a question is coming or something like that. But please do not hesitate to um, ask us your questions, send them on over, because uh, this is a cool but, I don't know, slightly complicated topic. Not that bad, but we want to make sure that you fully understand it. So, um, we are going to talk today about the monthly newsletter and the market watch in the CRM. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, I had to get ready that I forgot. That's for later. Okay. Uh, I just logged into my CRM account, and as a reminder, most of the time, or for most people, you're going to be doing that right from your Okta dashboard. You'll have to shove that Tucker CRM button. Uh, if you were on early enough, you saw that I did not. That's because it's my training account, so don't be alarmed. You should be using your Okta dashboard. Do you want to pause for a second? You've probably seen this notice come up that they now have automated e-cards for birthdays and move-in anniversaries, so those are pretty cool. Um, I sent myself a test one, and it uh, looked, looked great. But So explore that option, but also just remember that keeping in touch for birthdays and anniversaries is one of the easiest things you can do as an agent, so uh, we don't want you to kind of miss out on that personal contact with people. Okay, tell me later. Okay, so um, for the monthly newsletter and market watch, those are two separate things, or at least they're going to be. Currently what's available to you is the monthly e-newsletter that comes out from the vendor. This is kind of what I refer to as the fluff piece. It's real estate related, kind of real estate light. Um, and this is available to you currently. You might already be using it. And moving forward, we're going to um, be changing it up a little and adding in some Tucker content before it goes to you to send to your clients. So that's uh, one kind of automated um, digital touch that you can set up. And then the second one is going to be very, very soon the market watch. So first we're going to start with just the regular monthly e-newsletter, that fluffy piece. So the first thing you need to do if you're wanting to set this up is over here on the left-hand side of your screen, your menu, and remember if it's collapsed, you can pull it out by clicking on that arrow at the bottom or click on the icon of the little, two little people for keep in touch. And under my Keep in Touch, I have the monthly e-newsletter. And I have this option over here that says Activate. If yours is already turned on, even if it's not going out to anyone, it probably says Deactivate, or yours might say Configure. I've already configured mine a few times for testing, so mine might look a little bit different. But go ahead and either click on Configure or click on the event name, monthly e-newsletter. And what you have here is the customization for the overall monthly e-newsletter. Remember, we're kind of doing the global keep in touch setup when we're in this section. So this is where you can say what months you want your monthly e-newsletter, the fluffy piece, to go out. Probably all of them, but if for some reason you do a special end of year newsletter so you don't want that to go out, you could uncheck December. You can then set up when you want that newsletter to go out on a specific day of the month, um, the first Monday, the first whatever of the month, a time. And then this is what's really important about that. Check the box that says include in calendar. And that way it's going to show up on your exact calendar, which is hopefully syncing with your Gmail calendar. So it's just going to um, show up there that that is ready, going to go out. And then I recommend that 
you turn on this reminder. The reason you want to turn that reminder on, including your calendar, is that you will have the option for this monthly e-newsletter, the fluffy piece, to customize it. So you might want to go in and add a little note um, or customize the personal message before it goes out or change the subject or whatever it is, or you just kind of want to be aware it's going out. Maybe you want to read it first. That could be very important. So this serves as your reminder that it's going to be going out. Underneath that is your default email subject. So you want this to be somewhat generic so that you don't ever have to customize it again if you don't want to. But if you did want to, you can. So uh, your real estate news from Lisa Evans in my case. Perfectly generic. If I never do anything with it again, awesome. But if I'm on top of it one month and I get that reminder two days before that my newsletter is going out, I can hop in here and change this. Not here, but somewhere else change the subject to say your October real estate news or your November. Actually, I'm changing my say newsletter. So somewhat of a generic subject there. Down below you have the option to include or exclude an email header as well as a signature. Um, our testing shows that, uh, well, not really shows. So our testing, what we would recommend is that you include your email header and then probably exclude your email signature. And I'm going to show you why. What I am pulling up right now is a preview of the monthly newsletter. And this is just our generic preview it. So looking at this preview here, this is the email header. And they don't include an email signature, but if they did, it would go like underneath this typed signature and this heading. So if your email signature is that pretty graphic that you use in your Gmail or something like that, that's awesome and it looks great. But it's also really close to the header. Um, and that might be a lot of your face in a short period. So we recommend you do not use it, and that's why this is where it would add that. For your email header, we'll touch on this a little bit more um, in a little bit for the type. You have standard and custom. Standard is what is recommended from the vendor, um, but I'm going to give you kind of an inside FYI about the custom in a little bit. Okay, um, this last option down here, oops, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave my signature on right now just so that you, can, you guys can see it, what it looks like, um, but you're probably watching yours off. Social media share button, include or exclude. This is so that um, one of your clients, if they get the newsletter and they wanna share it to Facebook, they could do that, includes that button. So pretty convenient. These are settings you're gonna wanna play around with just a little bit um, before you send it out for the first time. Send it to yourself as a test, see what you like. Um, you might want to change up your email header after you see it, all of that. And then once you get it the way you like it, the idea is that you're going to set it and forget it. You're never going to have to go back and change it again. So underneath all those various settings are these checkboxes. This first one, automatically assign new manually enter contacts to your e-newsletter, you're probably going to want that checked because why not? If I meet someone in an open house and I add them to my database with an email address, I absolutely want them getting that monthly fluffy e-newsletter. It's just one more way for my name to appear in their inbox, even if they never open it, even if they delete it right away. They're seeing my name, staying front of mind. So you're probably gonna want that checked. The next two options are gonna vary just depending on if you're using them. Um, automatically assign lead capture contacts. So if you are paying for leads from like realtor.com or you are one of those rogue agents using the company that searches the Z and ends with Illo and you're paying for leads, um, you can say, yes, any new leads you get automatically send them to your e-newsletter. You might want to, you might not. depends on, you know, kind of your success rate with those, like if they're actually quality leads. And then if you are syncing from another source, if you um, talk to the vendor exact and you set up syncing with your cell phone contacts, for example, and again, if you're going to do that, talk to the vendor. Um, but if you have that set up, then if you add a new contact in your phone, it syncs with the CRM, they would automatically be added. 
you're going to get that here if you're not syncing, and most people are not, so that's fine. So this is one that whenever I enter someone just into the CRM, they're going to be added. The important thing to point out here, and there's that note in bold that says, exact contacts provide you with up to 2,500 free mass emails per month. And that is uh, typically enough for most people, but if your database is huge, you already have 3,000 people, or maybe you have 2,000 people, and you're going to send this and the market watch, which we're going to get to in a little bit, then you could go over, you, you could end up going over that 2,500. So you have a couple options. Option number one is clean out your contacts. Do you really have 3,000 people you need to email? I'm judging you. Uh, option number two is select who you really want to target with these newsletters. If you're list of contacts that's in the CRM includes um, a bunch of realtors or a bunch of vendors. Maybe you don't want them to get this market watch. Maybe not. Maybe you do. I don't know. Up to you. Um, the, or not this market watch, this newsletter. For the market watch, since that is local data, that's another way to cut down on your contacts or who you're sending to. Um, we absolutely think you should be uploading your contacts that live out of state. If you have um, a network in Alabama because you have relatives there or used to live there, whatever it is, leave them in. That's just, a, you need to mark them in a different way and remind them about your relocation services and your global. Um, but they might not really care about Indiana data, so you could exclude them from your market watch sending. So those are all ways to kind of help stay within that 2,500 per month. If you need to um, purchase emails because you are sending over that, you simply go to this screen and I'm going to click here. And these are your purchase options. They're really cheap. The smallest bundle you can buy is a thousand emails for ten bucks. And of course, the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. And these are banked. So if one month um, you need fifty contacts, fifty extra emails going out, it'll pull fifty from that, and then you'll have nine hundred and fifty. And then it'll pull however many you need the next time you send, and so on, and so on. So they will um, kind of roll over. If anyone remembers a rollover minute? And then underneath all that, down at the bottom, you have contacts assigned. And this is where you can see exactly who assigned to the newsletter, assign new people, things like that. So right now, I'm not going to assign anyone. If you're following along, go ahead and hit save. Okay. And so now your monthly e-newsletter e is configured but you can see I don't have any contacts assigned. And that's because I might want to still kind of do some customization. Um, just bef basically before you assign your whole database, uh, we want you to put your eyes on it. So you will have how many contacts are there later. So once I am ready to uh, send my e-newsletter and I have contacts assigned and all of that, again, the idea is to set it and forget it. I hopefully don't have to do anything again. If I want to, I have the ability to customize this monthly e-newsletter. And when the time comes to do that, you go to mass email here on the left. Oh, actually, hang on. I'm going to hold up. I have some hands that are up. So we're going to pause for a second. Okay. I think we're good. We reached out to a couple people who had individual questions. So, all right, keep the questions coming. So, um, what I'm looking at again right now is I want to customize my monthly e newsletter or um, even just change the subject, anything little like that. So, I go to the mass email section and I have a monthly e newsletter tab. Now, if you click on that and you get a box that comes up that says you have to configure this first. That's what we just did. That's what you do in the keep in touch. So if you haven't configured it, you won't be able to get to this. So that it's okay if you want to go ahead and configure it to some basic settings, you can always go back and change it. So one thing I want to show you in here, our very first thing, is um, where you go for help. So remember that up here in the gray section, you have this overall help with the question mark. And you can look up topics, search for videos, do all kinds of stuff here. But when I'm working in a section like this, I also can look for 
the question mark kind of more down in that workspace. And then this video here is for a tutorial. So if I get to this spot and then I'm left going, oh goodness, what was I supposed to do? Look for those icons. If I hit this help button, it will take me to the text-based help for customizing the monthly e-newsletter. There it goes. Okay, so there's the text for it. It's pretty detailed. Or if I hit the play button, it brings up a video tutorial about setting up the newsletter. So it's, it's already topic specific. Okay, so this is everything that we already set up before. There's my subject. Again, I did it fairly generic so that I don't have to change it, but if I wanted to, before it goes out for October, I can come in here and say your October real estate newsletter. And I'm changing it just for that one time. These are settings that we already did on that, that previous keep in touch setup, but if I wanted to change anything for this one, I can go ahead and do that. And then down here are, um, are, is where you're really going to want to focus on if you're going to make changes and just preview it. There is a big preview button, that purple button. So if I hit on that, or if I click that, this is a preview of the current newsletter. So here is my header. This is the personal message, and it's generic. And then this is that signature. The on mine, I said include. But you can kind of see how it's a short amount of space. So if my header included my picture, then having this here, it can be a little close together. So you might want to think about just including your header and not including the signature. And then here are the articles that are going to be included. So this lets me preview it. Now if I want, I can customize the personal message. So I clicked on customize personal message and it expands here. So if I want, I can just change this voice to make it sound a little bit more like mine. Um, had some, you know, snarkiness in, that's what I would do. I'm kind of a sarcastic person, if you know me. But um, I would just make sure it sounds like me. If you're on a team and this is something that you're sending out on behalf of you and like maybe your spouse is, is your team member, change the eyes to we, stuff like that. And then if you're not using your signature, so I just turned mine off, you can go in here and type your name. And if I wanted to insert an alternate signature, something that maybe complemented my header, I could do that. And so now you can see I hit preview again. That image that was here before is gone, and just that Lisa Evans I just typed is here. So. I can open that and go, oh, I really want to say thanks. So you can do a lot of kind of trial and error customization like that. So that's customizing the personal message. And then I can also customize the articles. So if you click on this, I should save my changes first. Customize articles. So these are all the articles that are going to be included. Okay, so three articles, that's standard. And if you like one of these, like you really like when to call a real estate agent, because obviously they should be calling you. So you want this to be article number one. I can change the order and make that number one. That got bumped down to two and three. Okay, so I have to save that change. There it is. If I don't like an article, I don't want my clients to get into this. This is what they call me for. I can hit exclude, and it won't include that article. But if I change my mind, I can always put it back in. I can edit an article. So again, if I need to change any of these I's to we's or something like that, um, or maybe I want to be funny and say, when to call a real estate agent, hint, now. So I can customize articles like that. You don't want to get too deep into this just because you don't want to mess up the original. Um, you can't always restore the original, but it's one of those, you can go down a really dark 
um, deep hole here of trying to customize and make it perfect when really it's, it's good as is. So if I do make changes, I want to make changes, I can do that and hit save. Or I can add my own article with title, text, and image. I can send myself a preview so I can see exactly what it'll look like to my clients. I have a count of how many emails I have available. I can purchase more right here. I can change contacts, who are assigned, all that good stuff here. And then I can also see a history of what was sent out before and who it went to. Okay, so let's talk about that header for a minute. So this is the a uh, standard email header that if you went through training with us, we had you set up. Um, this is the most user-friendly one. Um, this link here, one a mobile-friendly newsletter, explains more about it. But basically, this header will fit on any computer, any phone. It'll just always work. So that's your safest bet. However, it's not always the prettiest. Um, you can't do a lot of customization to it, and we understand that. So this is my, like, insider tip to use with caution. You can also add a custom header to your account. You do that by going into your user profile and setting up a custom one in addition to that standard. And then if I want, I can turn that on. Let me save that. I might have removed my custom header. Oh, I have to turn it on here. And my custom header, what I've been using is, like here's a pretty picture, or um, a Facebook cover photo. I've been using that. The trick is you want to set the width to 500 pixels. And that'll keep it small enough that it shouldn't get too weird on mobile devices. So now back in my newsletter, I said I want my custom email header used, and here's what that preview looks looks like. So here is that new header, and then if I wanted to include my signature this time, it's right here. I should probably remove my typed one in. That's what it looks like. So now I don't have my face so big, so close together. I really like for this, as I was saying, the Facebook cover photos that are available on the toolbox. If you go to market materials and then social media, Facebook cover photos, these are just pretty cool, like, headings. They're for a Facebook page, but they work as really good headings for a newsletter as well. So you can pick one of those that you like and upload that, and you could use that. So my word of warning, kind of be cautious with this, is that custom header is what they do not guarantee will work on all devices. So you do run the risk of someone opening your monthly newsletter on their phone and maybe they're using their built-in mail program on their phone, maybe they're you know, opening a web browser on their phone, maybe they're using a Gmail app, you don't know. But you run the risk of when they open it that like it stretches out the newsletter because it can't um, fit the right width, so everything gets stretched out. You have to scroll back and forth through the message to see everything. That's the problem with the custom headers. You run that risk. Now with that being said, Again, I've tested this a number of times now with using a custom header, and every time I set the pixel width of that custom header to be 500, it was okay. But that's my disclosure. If you want to do the custom header for whatever reason, um, just know that that is a possibility. Actually, I'll show you an example of it in a little bit. Okay? Everyone on board with that? Good. All right. I'm just going to pause for a minute for questions because that was a lot of info we just covered. So. A 
Okay, so some questions to address the group, and some of you have, um, who asked these have already gotten individual answers, but um, some of them are really good for the group. So the 2,500 emails you get, um, if it's for a team or an individual. Uh, good question. So if you as a team leader and your team member have two separate accounts, you each log in to your Octa separately, you each get 2,500. Um, if you are using that team setup within the CRM, which again is not for everyone, it shows the full, like if there were two people, it would show 5,000, which is good and bad because that means that potentially one team member could send out 3,500 newsletters and it's pulling from that full 5,000 bank. So you want to be careful with that. But yes, it is possible. Um, can you insert an article from another source? You can, but you would have to copy and paste it and also link to the original. So you would um, kind of have to recreate it on your own, but make sure you always, always, always give credit when you do that. Um, for the custom header, yep, where do you go to add that picture? So let me show you how it from the beginning. Because again, I really like these cover photos for the newsletter. Um, this has been my favorite. So I'm on the toolbox and I just clicked on that Facebook cover photo to download it. And then back in my CRM, I go to my user profile an email header, and scroll down, and here's that setup. So to add an image, and this works the same way as an email signature, I click on the little mountain range here, and I have to upload my image first. Find that one I just downloaded. I don't know where I saved it. Give me a second. And keep your questions coming while I'm hunting for my picture. It doesn't even want to show me. Okay. There we go. Let's try this. There it is. So once I hit upload, it's now available for me to select. I click on it once, and then under the width for pixels, I type in 500 and insert. And now that's my custom header. So now if I go back to my monthly newsletter and I preview it, I change that header so you can see what it looks like. And doesn't that look nice? I like that. Okay, let's go over some more of these questions. Okay, so um, as far as the customization, this is, it gets a little confusing about where you go because there are so many different spots. I totally get that. Um, the first place you want to go is to the keep in touch, and that's where you configure the big overall global. And once you've done that, um, that's that kind of set it and forget it. You get your generic stuff set up. Then from there, you'll always go to the mass email section to the monthly e-newsletter, and that's where you can preview the current content and make changes for the current issue. So that's kind of the general rule for a number of topics. Um, when you're working here, like in this, keep in touch, it's the global setting. So for your birthday reminders, the global setting, and then when you're in your contact, you can make a change for that person. So same thing here, keep in touch, I set up my global generic stuff, and then I go to my uh, mass email monthly newsletter and can change it for that month. Okay. Yes. 
So it looks like maybe we need another run through of some of that. That's perfectly fine. This is why we're doing this webinar, because it is a lot. And yes, full salutation, because that would be reconfigured to say first name. Yeah, so that personal message and you customize it. Um, this insert merge field. Those are the options that you have, or you can take that. Okay, so let's do a quick run through again of everything. And this is gonna be like a quick run through since we just went through it once, but it'll maybe help you put the pieces together again. So the very first time I'm setting up my newsletter or if I need to change something that applies to every time it goes out, I'm going to keep in touch. And I click on monthly e-newsletter. And this is where I'm setting up my generic stuff. What months I want to go out, what time, reminders, a generic subject. And if I always want to include an email header and what type. And if I always want to include an email signature or not. I always want to include these social media shareables. And then who's going to participate? And I'm going to do, like, I would do that later once I get this in a format that I like. That's when I would feel comfortable assigning contacts. That way, if it does go out by mistake, I at least know I have a header on there that it, it looks professional. It doesn't look like a total oops. So that's the first place I go. And then the second place I'm going to go is mass email, and the tab for monthly e-newsletter. So the idea of this e-newsletter is that you can set it and forget it. Those settings that we just did and keep in touch are, are that, set it and forget it. I gave a generic um, subject. I set up when it goes out. I set up my always use a header, always do this, always do that. But then every month, if I want to customize it, this is where I go. So mass email, monthly e-newsletter. And I can change my subject for the month. Or spooky. Oh, not spooky. Real estate newsletter, because it's October. If I want to make any changes to this, this one time. And then I'm going to customize the personal message. And or customize the articles. But just remember, guys, don't get too stuck on all of this customization. It sounds fun and awesome, and it can be, and it is, and it's great to have that available, but it's like a, a move and ready house. It's, it's ready to go. Maybe at some point you'll wanna make some upgrades, make some changes, but otherwise, it's good to go as is. So don't stress out about this part too much. Just focus on getting it set up in the generic um, with the generic settings so that you know it will always be okay. And the biggest pieces for that are your subject line, your header, and or your signature, if you want that. Um, so the question, will it skip over any entry in the database that doesn't have an email address? Yes, it will. Um, and if someone has opted out, like they've said, unsubscribe to your newsletter, it will not send to them as well. Okay. So that's the setup for it. Remember, there's the big overall piece, and then each month, if you want, you can set it up and do some customization. You also have a tab here that says campaign reporting. And if you click in there, I can change my dates. I don't think I've sent anything from that test account, so let me try a different account. But this lets you um, track and see what you've sent and open rates, bounce back, all that fun, nerdy, nerdy stuff. Okay, so I'm in a different account right now. And these are mass emails I have sent out. So the first thing I did was I changed my date range because I couldn't remember when I've sent out test emails. So I just want to give me the whole year, show me everything. And it gives me generic statistics. 
that what I've sent, bounce back, open. And then here's everything within that date range that I have sent. It tells me when, how many messages went out, the total bounce backs, open rates, all of this good stuff. So if I want to know what exactly this was I sent out, I can hit view next to it. It shows me a preview. And I can say, oh, that's right. I did send this about Windows. And if I click on the message, it's the email subject, so if I click on this message, now I can see specific details about that message, exactly when it went out, bounces for that message, who was on my recipient list, who opened it. Um, a word about open rates, don't get too hung up on those. They are depressingly low. Um, I'm not kidding, the industry standard is something like 10 or 12 percent open rate. Um, obviously, we want people to be opening the newsletter, but really the idea is that they're seeing your email address, your name. You're giving them that reminder that, hey, friend of mine, I'm in real estate. I can help so that they're just always remembering you. Um, the one thing, I mean, I definitely do recommend you go here to these statistics after you send out your first monthly newsletter to your contact base, because that's going to be a really quick way to look at those bounce backs and find any like typos, you know, people who have changed email addresses and get those corrected. So definitely the first time you send out that mass email, go into your campaign reporting and check for bounce backs and you can see what corrections you need to make. I'm going to pause for just a second, but we're finishing up some questions. Hopefully this is a combination of exciting with a side of overwhelming, because it is a lot to get set up. I absolutely understand that. Um, that's why we don't want you to stress out too much about all the customization. We just want you to get it set up um, for that, to be happy with kind of the generic stuff and then you can set it and forget it, okay? All right, um, getting a bunch of questions about the unsubscribed. Honestly, I haven't had anyone unsubscribe because I've only sent it to myself for testing, uh, but you can always, under your reports, pull up a list of who has said no to mass email. Um, I have worked with an agent once and they said that when they were in the newsletter, they were able to see unsubscribes. Um, but again, since we've just kind of made this available, um, I haven't been able to find it again because I'm not subscribing, unsubscribing from my own email. <laughs> okay. So that is your monthly e-newsletter, that fluffy piece. And that is your, you know, set it and forget it, digital touch number one. The exciting part, number two, this is new, is the market watch. Okay, the market watch is not new, obviously. But putting it in the CRM um, and making it available for you to automatically send out is new. It's not something that Tucker has done before. In the past, you had to pay an outside provider to do that. So now we are providing that service for you. Hope there are all kinds of oohs and ahs happening on the other end right now. Um, so that feature is going to be live um, end of this month, which is when it normally would have gone out from some of those other providers and when the data gets pulled. So it's going to work pretty similar to this, and you're going to have to kind of bear with me, but because it's not actually live yet, I can't click through and show it to you. I don't even have access to it, but I have some screenshots. Um, and this is going to be the, it will look similar to this viewing. So if it's not exactly the same, don't hold that against me, but you'll get the general idea. It's going to be easier than this. And once it is rolled out to everyone, we will send out detailed instructions on making sure you're using it correctly. So for the market watch, the first thing I want to show you is, this is a 
example of, again, sort of what it will look like, what the finished product will look like. So this is where your email header would go. And again, I use that Facebook cover photo. And then this is the beginning of the article. Well, not article, the beginning of the summary about the data. And um, this is kind of the equivalent to your personal message almost. And then there's a graphic here, really pretty infographic, that takes all of those numbers that come in that you know six page market watch and makes them user friendly. You'll also be able to, or your client will be able to click on this to take you to the blog post where the whole thing is posted so they can read more. And in this case, I uh, stole Mike McGill's CPN number, thanks Mike, for my testing. <laughs> and so it took you to his branded page. And that's all the information about it. And then a link to one of our blog articles. So short and sweet. But that's gonna be set up for you um, to automatically go out to your clients. So that customization um, will work a little differently. It's gonna be a little easier, which is nice. And what that will look like-ish, again, because it's not completely ready yet, but will be this month, is just about like this. Where currently with those mass emails, this is where it stops with campaign reporting, and there'll be a new tab added called market report, market watch, something like that, something along those lines. And that's where you will go. Um, there's not gonna be as much customization because again, it's short and sweet, we're keeping it simple, but it's gonna let you just say yes, you want to send it, or no, you don't. And then who are you sending it to? All of your contacts in your database or just the people you're sending your current e-newsletter to. And it's probably gonna be one, you know, it's gonna likely be the same as your current e-newsletter, but if you did wanna include everyone at that point, you could. Huh? So that is coming at the end of the month. Um, the sending of it, like why, the reason why it's gonna be easier for you is the sending of it, like the date and time is gonna be controlled by us, by Tucker. And that's because we want to make sure that when you're sending it out, since it's going with data, we want it to be timely. So we don't want to put that burden on you to make sure it gets out at the right time. We're just going to make sure that if you've opted in, that it goes out when it should. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, subject line, all of that, I believe we're going to be taken care of. And again, once that piece is done being built because they're doing that just for us and it's ready to go we'll send out more detailed instructions and we'll let you know for example when it's going out that way if you are sending the other fluffy piece you can um, schedule that one to go out consistently based on when the market watch goes out so you're not sending things like three days apart you're putting a week or two or whatever you want to do in between them if that makes sense okay so again, that is coming. We've been told that it's going to be ready um, for the end of October, which would be with September data, which is normal, when this normally goes out to agents and goes out to some of those other providers. And we are very excited about it. Um, it's gonna be visually beautiful and we are thrilled that we are able to give you these two different options to send out to your clients. So you can use one, you can use both, whatever you want. All right, um, so as far as who these newsletters are going to, remember for your fluffy one, um, you're gonna kind of set up who all it's going to and then for your market watch, that's when, where you'll say, send it to my entire database or just my monthly e-newsletter, the fluffy piece, contacts. So who is that going to? I'm gonna go to keep in touch. I'm going back into the monthly e-newsletter. Again, I'm in keep in touch. 
monthly e-newsletter. And then at the bottom, that's where we saw contacts assigned. And when you're ready, when you have viewed the sample one, sent it to yourself, that's what I did first. For choose contacts, I selected only myself. And for a few months now, I've had it going just to me so that I could figure out exactly what kind of customization I wanted to do or exactly how I wanted to change these generic settings. But once you are A-OK -okay with it, ready to go, you're going to come here, choose contacts. And I can select all. This, for some reason, doesn't always work on my computer. And this is only going to be people that have an email address. I also always like to, once I do this whole all thing, it says contact selected 19. It says that I'm viewing 1 to 19 of 19, so I know it got everyone. If it only selected some of them, I might have to go to the next page and select them. Or if your computer doesn't hate you the way mine does, you can try and select all and see if that works. But maybe you don't want to send it to everyone. So that's this advanced search. And I want to select who exactly to send to. I'm just going to send it to my A and my B list. So it works that way with including people or excluding people. So if I have been labeling my contacts with realtor, or vendor, and I don't want them to get this, I can exclude contacts assigned to any of these groups. And right now, that's vendors and realtors. So it would do a search of all of my contacts and take anyone out who is labeled realtor or labeled vendor, which is now 18 people in this case. And that's who it's going to go to now. And if I have this checkbox up here of automatically assign new manually entered people, when I add someone new here, they're automatically going to be added to this list. I'm going to cancel. I don't want that going out to these random test email addresses I have added. Um, if you finish the session and you kind of feel like I clicked on some stuff, I don't know if I'm really ready for stuff to go out. What did I do? Is it going? And you kind of go into that panic mode. Don't. Just go back to keep in touch. And what I want you to do is look right here under assigned contacts. And if it says no contacts assigned, it's not going out to anyone. You're OK. Or if it says 300 contacts assigned and you're in total panic mode because it's not ready to go out, you can always hit deactivate. And that's going to turn that event off for all of the people. So that's kind of your pause button. That's not to say you shouldn't go in there and turn it on, but just as you're testing it out, I know that was my big concern of making sure it didn't go out to people I didn't want it to or it didn't go out before I was ready. So this is going to be your re kind of reassure yourself it's okay. Go to keep in touch and check contacts assigned and deactivate if you want. If it were me, I would assign at least myself, okay? Okay. That was a lot of info. A lot of fun and exciting info, I hope. Um, keep questions coming. That is the overall of all of it, though. So um, we are going to keep sticking around here for your questions. I can show you guys anything else that you want to see again. Um, if you have kind of more in-depth one-on-one questions, you can always feel free to email those over to us and we can help you out. But again, just to kind of summarize what we went over today, for your monthly e-newsletter, the fluffy piece, you need to set that up and you're going to do that under keep in touch and you click on the event and you set up when you want it to go out, a generic subject, if you want your email header and signature. And then that's where, when you're ready, you select contacts. That's step one. And then step two is under mass email, monthly e-newsletter. This is where I can customize it for the current issue if I want. So that's a big if, if in capital letters. But at the very least, I can preview it. And this is also where I will go for the market watch. And then as you're testing this out and getting it ready for the email header, 
and signature. All of that is under your user profile, which is in the top right corner of your screen. It's a little circle with the person. And that's where you can change your header and signature. So you can get those um, in a way that works for that newsletter. Okay? All right. If you want to stick around, keep asking questions, please do so. We are here to help you. Um, if you feel good and you want to step out and hang up, have at it. If you feel overwhelmed and you want to hang up, that's okay, but um, try not to be too overwhelmed. We don't want to stress you out, so reach out to us for help or with questions. And otherwise, we're just going to stick around and answer your questions. So thank you so much for coming out this afternoon. If you have questions, again, let us know. If you want to add Christy or I to your mass email recipient list so we can check it out for you, feel free. We're here to help you however we can. And then um, don't forget that next month, we our next webinar is on activity plans in the CRM. So register for that if you're interested. And that's it. Thanks, guys.